This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to the broadcast. Today we're moving on to Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, the second Gundam series from way back in 1985. Now, a few things you should know about Zeta Gundam. It is a sequel to the classic and kind of revolutionary original Mobile Suit Gundam from 79, so six years prior. Uh, An original Gundam was not a massive hit from day one. It took a while for original Gundam to kind of find its audience, but when it did, it hit big. And so Sunrise, the studio behind it, made the unusual decision to make a direct sequel to original Gundam. This was very rare at the time. You really did not see sequels in terms of full TV series sequels back then. You might see a compilation movie or kind of a sequel movie, uh, or like a movie adaptation of a thing, but doing a full TV series followed by another TV series that was a direct sequel, very unusual. And so, also interesting because Zeta actually takes place six years after original Gundam in its universe, in the Universal Century. So you get this interesting progression of time where the characters who survive Mobile Suit Gundam are now older. Uh, You also get a a new cast. Now there are some new characters, some old characters. You see uh, a mixture of those in this first episode as we get into it. Uh, Other thing to note is that the early 80s was a time when animation budgets and quality really skyrocketed in Japan. The animation quality in Zeta is miles ahead of original Gundam. And that's nothing against original Gundam, it's just what budgets were like at the time when that was made. So you'll definitely see a quality bump if you're used to watching original Gundam here. And that's really a pleasure to watch. Um, Man, they really put the budget into Zeta Gundam. Uh, So I think that's a pretty good introduction here. We're back in the regular tower. Oh, one other thing. Um, I had some audio issues this time around, um, having some microphone uh, situations here, some interference with other signals coming in. So you might hear some crackly audio in this. Apologies. I'm doing the best I can with this equipment. You know, what can I do? So let's get into Zeta Gundam. All right, let's do it. All right, I got to stop what? right there. I know, I was going to say, that is so different. <laughs> Andamo. No, this is totally different. Yeah. Gosh. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, animation quality is light years beyond yes um you know happy upbeat song very 80s pop yes whoo okay wow yeah also you note here the emphasis on sort of sci-fi realism um Mm -hmm. this idea of we've got this here's the cockpit here's where all the controls are very detailed very real it, it helps to answer the question. So if I move the feet, how do I do that? <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Wow. Pretty incredible. Wait, yeah. And just the rotation of that equipment and just giving the sense of, as you point out, scientific uh, science realism, science mm-hmm. fiction realism here. Yeah. Where it's just like, we're going to give you some idea that there is gravity and this is how we do it. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's just a, it's basically a pole cell. It's just spinning it. Right. Yeah. It's just, just two drawings, one spinning, but it again, just gives you that sense of, wow, what's going on? Well, there must be some science behind this. It's great. <laughs> Who's that? Hi, I'm sure. <laughs> it can't be sure. He has sunglasses on. <laughs> Notice how often they're using sort of ballistic imagery here of yeah. things moving towards you or away, which is the most expensive thing you can do in animation. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing lateral, just things moving forward and back, which is just getting across all that budget they have now. Should also be pointed out, uh, something I did not realize until recently, 
uh, Design Works Mamoru Nagano. That's mm-hmm. Five Star Stories. Really? Yeah, it's the guy behind Five Star Stories who does oh. these very distinctive <laughs> yeah. designs, like very ornate, very Rococo kind of mecha designs. It's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why the designs look so uh, different in yeah. Zeta Gundam. For better and worse, like like a lot of uh, fans of the time were not crazy about how how wild some of the designs got in Zeta Gundam. I love them, but they were really pushing here. Detail. Oh, jeez, that Saku. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Detail. Like, you know, it's funny. It's like, you know, when, when you watch in, in the original Gundam, <clears throat> you know, everything is in that style of, of animation. Yeah. So it's very – because you're more work concerned about movement than you are about what the mecha is itself. Mm-hmm. Here we're getting movement and this detail of this mecha. Yeah. And it just – you know, <clears throat> obviously the different models are improvements on the Zaku, but the Zaku just looks badass right mm-hmm. here. Absolutely. Just incredible. <laughs> Holy smokes, I had forgotten right? this. How yeah. in the opening credit sequence you see all these characters from original Gundam come back. Like, how awesome is that? Yeah. Like, here they all are, basically. That's, that's, that's really cool of them to do, to say, uh, we haven't forgotten. <laughs> right, yeah. And Kai's still got a smirk. Hey, Kai's still got the smirk. I love what they do with Kai in this, but anyway. Also realizing what they're doing here is also establishing, you know, again, this is a direct sequel to original Gundam, mm-hmm. but Zaku's are back. Right. S- so we're getting a sense of, okay, there's still some Xeon thing going on, potentially, possibly. Uh, we have other units, but we're not completely done with the Xeon thing. Hmm. And look at the style ships that they're, they're coming off of. Yeah, those are not Musai's. Right. right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now. Interesting. Those watching this would not recognize this immediately, but we're going to point it out here. So we get all of these shots of stars back and forth, it's zooming back and forth. We cut to this somebody. This is Char. Right. Uh, to open on this character says so much about his importance to the franchise um, and the fact that we're, we're pulling in here and we're not starting with exposition. We're not starting with, it is the year 0079 of Universal Century. We're starting with a single person in space. Yep. What I found interesting about that is that there is the connection between all the physical connection between all those mecha. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like there's a point being made here. I'm touching these mecha, establishing or late, you know, establishing something, a communication here. So, you know, it's kind of like, okay, so here we are. We're talking about this, and then we're going to move on from, mm-hmm. from this training exercise. But clearly, there, there's something there about touching this, about Gundams touching each other and being in tandem. And I, th- I just think that's that's kind of interesting there. I agree, and I, I th- wonder if, A, it isn't that scientific realism of, you know, uh, whatever mission they're on, they're, not try- they're trying to not use any communications methods. They're just touching right. so that the you know that will work but then also just the symbolism of you know humans touching in space right perhaps establishing that these are newer mm. mechs that that to your point that are more human movement than anything mm, true else. yeah bright slap <laughs> <laughs> we are three minutes in <laughs> and we've already got our first slap of the show great thank you Note a few things here, though. Uh, a, character is obviously being a little Amaro-like, of just like, yeah. ah, I'm just skipping class. He gets hit. He tumbles and comes back on his feet. Right. So clearly something a little different, both physically and kind of reactionally, than Amaro. And further, that his reaction is not offense. Right. It's just, I don't care, moving on. I mean... This would be horrible if this was an everyday occurrence. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so how's your, it how's your day go, honey? Oh, well, you know, I skipped practice, got bitch slapped, and then, you know, I there we go. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's Tuesday again. <laughs> yeah, it's Tuesday. It's fine. <laughs> wow, they're really fit. Um, they, they... <laughs> also interesting that they're starting off with this sort of a story 
you know, tone. Yeah. In the show where it's not war is pending. It's not, you know, warship attacking a colony. This is very much like this feels like the beginning of a, a romance anime. Right. Uh, and look how people are relaxed. Yeah. Look, you got a dude just leaning back there and you got another guy or somebody reading a book just casually. So, yeah, the war is not happening right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. 15-year-olds driving. Yeah, apparently it's a theme that we just have but, to get going to. Now, do you think that that card was just a way to just, like, almost like... um you know, like around here in Baltimore, we have those those scooters. You, you, mm, just, yeah. you know, do the QRC code and you're able to go and pay the yep. thing. Do you think this is something like that? Like, I, I, this is not actually his car. This is just like, oh, here's a bank of cards you can use. I assume so. You have the car. Right. I, I assume so. It, it being a colony, I assume we've got shared resources everywhere. So yeah. if you want to use a car, you go in, you enter your ID card. That kind of – that's your ignition switch and ID card and everything. Yeah. Makes huh. sense. So kind of no reckless. Yeah, he, he very reckless driving. But also note what they're doing here. You get the car coming at you, and then the car becomes close enough to be visible enough that you can tell the expressions of the characters in there, mm. then moves on. It's a tricky animation thing to do. Yeah. To track that all the way through that shot and have it show up and have like the car seem like it's on the track the whole time. That's impressive. One thing I would like someone to do, honestly, uh, that shot of run, of driving through the forest on a side. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? Like, 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 you know, there's there's that thing of like wanting to know, to know the detail. You have a forest out in space. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we're saying here. So, how far does the ground go? How yeah. is it is it kept? You know, that kind of thing, and just kind of furthers kind of the point of just like how important sides are that they they operate correctly mm -hmm. you know because if you're going to have this biodiversity you know you're, you're going to need to know how to how to do these things yeah i just i just think i just love the idea of just like hey we have a forest in space because you know when you watch space scene a uh, space 1999 <laughs> it's literally just here's your white hallway mm -hmm. have fun with that you know yep yeah What's 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 your what's your theme of colors? White, black, and orange. Great, thank you. <laughs> no. Yeah, you know, th there's there's that interesting sense of it's Earth, but it's not. Right. Yeah. Totally. No. <laughs> Apparently not. And again, it's so interesting seeing how they're establishing our characters here. We don't know who this is. Um, the fact that we're focusing on him for this long implies something. But kind of a nervous guy. Yeah. A lot of well, I mean, this is, you know, we didn't see Amaro biting his thumb like no. that. Mm -hmm. We saw Amaro focused on whatever it was, you know, his, mm -hmm. his own little, you know, spectrum thing, deal. <laughs> but it was this, you know, that, that, that focus. Here he's got a different focus, but he's just like, I need to get there. I need to get there. I need to get there. You know, it's just this yeah. nervous energy, unlike mm -hmm. Amaro, which is like, I just want to understand. You're absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's this unfocused energy. Yeah. Compared to Amaro's focus energy. Great point. I felt like that was a Disney ride. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, like, you know, you're on the thing, you're about to go on the ride, you're going to do a hard left turn. There you go. <laughs> um, and again, think about the storytelling they're doing here of reminding us that we're on a colony, reminding mm -hmm. us of the technological aspects of this. Um, we're never too far away from those science fictional elements. Do you think that's a new type? It's certainly implying that's a possibility here. Uh, that there's some sense he's got more than usual. Because, uh, I mean, granted, it's possible a human person could look out that and, and see, that, glance yeah. the, see the lights. But yeah, just the way he did it <laughs> seems weird. Um, I also just want to call out this just visual style of adding these uh, gray shadow bars in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that Sunrise does a lot in this era. And it just adds a little sense of drama to the moment, the, this sense of like zooming in on the character and focusing on the character. Mm -hmm. And it's a little thing, but I think it it does add a lot. Yeah. That noise again, that new type noise. Yeah. Char feels it too. Huh. Um, and the, and just the visuals of this, just that 
where they're pointing, the, they're placing the camera a little bit above him, so he's kind of looking up at us in this very dramatic way. It's cool. What's that tingling? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, he remembers now. Actually, I just, okay, hold on. I just realized something. Um, if that's that, then remember the audience doesn't know who this is yet. Oh, that's right. This is just some random it's Lieutenant Quattro. So now we know who that is. It's, that's yeah. wow. That's it's cool. Identifier. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's really neat. How like they just make it so pedestrian and automated. Yeah. Right. Like that. That's just like oh yeah. That, that's what that thing is. You just mm -hmm. grab the thing and you do it. Yeah, and the visual storytelling of showing it to you. Yeah. And then showing them grab it and go, we're like, oh, okay, of course that that would be a, that would that would happen. I yeah. also assume that actually, let me rewind and we'll go to that. There we go. Um, I'm assuming that it's like touch sensitive because right. like they're all sitting there. He goes and grabs one and it starts moving, so it must be triggered by like motion or, or grabbing it or something, and then right. off it goes. Interesting. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Zeta. Um, so I think Camille has issues. Just a few. Just a few. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Interesting visual uh, artistic choice here, though, of you have the purplish background, uh, the girl in blue, and Camille like an outline, but then with the orange. Right. Which goes to sort of highlight him and push her into the background a little bit, but really draw your eye to him visually. Interesting. So not Amaro. No. <laughs> not at all. Also, what's his name again? Camille. Oh, okay. I th it wasn't clear. Yeah. I think it's Camille. Camille? Could be Camille. Camille? Camille? I think it's Camille. I think it's Camille. I think it's Camille, yes. Probably Camille, yeah. <laughs> so check out that visual Right. Quirk, where he's walking towards the camera, and then we get this insert of just the face. So you really see his expression, and then it cuts away. Not something you see these days. No. So I, I got to tell you, my first thought when I come across like a U.S. Marine or something like yeah. that, and they tick me off, I'm mm -hmm. kind of like, just keep walking. You don't because... just punch them? No, I don't think that's a very good idea. Just sure. I, yeah. I mean, I don't see well, why I mean, not. I'm sure everything will work out in the end here, but, you know. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and again, what an interesting introduction to your main character. Yeah. This just really gets to him. And in fairness, again, it's, it's, it's mid-80s. Like, this is what a lot of teenagers get upset about right is their identity how, how people right. talk to them how people identify them like there's a, there's a lot of potential identity issues here that he clearly hasn't fully processed yet no and i can totally see Ra ralph Macchio playing this role back <laughs> in the day 100 interesting they actually use physics yeah also wow. love the detail that equal and opposite mm -hmm. reaction uh, because they established a zero g area and right. you actually heard the click of their shoes uh, hitting a magnetic surface right? as they were walking in. So, yeah, just, just cool. Ow. Yeah, that, that ow. Yeah, that's, that's going to leave a mark, probably. Um, also, again, unusual for Gundam, I would say to have antagonists who are like this just evil yeah <laughs> like this is just schoolyard bullying straight up yeah yeah it's right. so dismissive he just flew by this thing nobody did anything and you could almost see that the, the the disgust in lack of training and lack of like he was probably thinking in his mind slender would never have done that right slender, exactly slender would, slender would have been on me in a second a hundred percent um yeah I also like the casualness of, where am I going to break in? Yeah. Just like, okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not difficult. Just, it's going to happen. Just yeah. wonder where. 
funny here too how they're referencing back to that classic opening shot from the first episode right. of original Gundam, the uh, Gundam coming in, and also smart because and again this is back in a, in a day where folks assumed you'd never watch a show again. Right. How many Gundam fans had even seen that first episode? Who are tuning into this now? Probably not Probably all of them. Not. Right. Um, you know, this is for the select few that were there from day one. So, normally they would fly over, but they wanted to make the point he flew under. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, which gets to the maneuverability of his mecha. Yeah. Um, and it gets it, to the fact that they're just... Honestly, they have the budget to just have them go wherever they want now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, but also, what a dramatic shot here yeah. of this. Uh, getting back to what we were talking about earlier about the updates, the mecha designs. Uh, yeah. You know, this feels so much more complicated and just more powerful in just the general lines right. of of a mecha design than the stuff from original Gundam. Um, and nothing yeah. against the designs; it's just the the we've 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 added muscle. If you will, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fleshed it out, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a this is fan service of a different name. Hundred percent. Oh my God, you are so right. It goes back to the first thing. Yeah. But, you know, wow. they, they, they went into the colony, but you didn't really see. You just saw like this a like, blob of just doing the thing. We understood mm-hmm. what was happening, but now they're just saying we're going to articulate the hand, grabbing the thing, and twisting. Mm-hmm. Wow. We're even going to replicate the little scrap that flew out. Uh, to, right. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry, but imagine being those guys. We're just the HVAC guys. What's <laughs> going on? Why is this happening? I think there's your oh shoot moment. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> Note, he gets out of the head. Right. I honestly do not remember like all of the details of this, but that's an that's, that's a difference. Yeah. yeah, that's new. Yeah. You can see that the little thing of a bobber decoder yeah. decoded three two star four four. And his fingers go to three, three two, two star like it, it's not in so many anime, you know, it just goes up and it kind of randomly Mrs. No, they're we have budget. So good. <laughs> so grateful. I also want to point out here how Char gets in, immediately goes to the wall, walks along the wall, meaning he's a spacer. Right. He just understands how to move in a three dimensional environment. Up is down, down is up. Yep. Right. Yeah. What an odd statement. Yeah. Smells like a colony. Like a colony, yeah. Well, you think about it; it's reprocessed air. Everything's probably reprocessed. Earth yeah. is more fresh, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, so there's. I don't think it was necessarily a bad commentary. Like you know, oh True. god, oh god, it's a colony. <laughs> oh jeez, oh, I'm gonna put the faceplate down. Yeah. You know, no. True. Almost like almost like yeah, kind of like home. Mm-hmm. True. I'm sorry, I just re- automatically revert to shoo! <laughs> now, not a complaint. An observation on how science fiction is always a reflection of its time. Right. I love Char's little portable, like, Panasonic camera here. <laughs> right. Right. Again, it's 1985 when this was made. This is exactly what technology looked like at the time. These, these <clears throat> little, little things. Right. Um, and it's not like this is an impossible design for some kind of, you know, portable spy, you know, um, uh, device like this. Like, yeah, I, I could, I could see this being a thing in the future. It just looks just like it was made by Sony. Sony or Polaroid. Like Polaroid, have, yeah. You have, you have expect like the thing to go, and you pull out the little shake it, watch I hope nobody shoots at me while I'm shaking this image out. <laughs> Takes a whole six pictures. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> and also note what he's doing here. He's taking photos of the entire colony. Yeah. So he's not 
on a laser mission. He's like, what is going on here? I need to document everything. Well, what's kind of interesting is as he's flying through this, what, what are we not seeing in this colony? And something he said a few minutes before, which was this was made supposedly by scraps. Yeah. Various other Sion sides or whatever. And you, as he's flying through this, you don't see any green spaces. Mm-hmm. This You're is right. all industrial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Well. Indeed. I think as soon as one sees something like that, you know what's coming. And <laughs> I do like how it's just the feet. Yeah. Just enough of a hint to get, have us go, oh, ooh, what is ooh, that? what's that? I want to know what that is. Oh, and, and a ship as well. Yeah. That's, that's big. And you know what else is noticeable that this is so different? That's mm. pollution. You're right. Yeah. Great point. Um, your normal colony would have trees everywhere to keep right. that going. Yeah, there's smog. Hmm. Oh. Well. Yeah. Uh, a black Gundam. Yeah. Um, I, I apologize to the staff that I just happened to pause on the one frame where they like forgot to draw all of the torso. Right. As it, I, I think, just on this one particular moment, but uh, still, very dramatic moment. Yeah. Okay, Char. Um, you know the saying, you don't bring a knife to a gunfight? <laughs> don't bring a gun to a mecha fight. Mm hmm. Right? Yeah. And again, it's they spend the time to show him pulling out the gun, so you know Char has a plan. Right. Just what could it be? That's bad. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love that Shar gets shot at, turns, take a photo, turns back and round. <laughs> I mean, it's almost as if he's saying to the pilot, yeah, F you. You know. 100%. Also see what they did here where the Gundam hits the rock on the side of the colony and doesn't know what to do. Just kind of stumbles yeah. and falls. And again, I guess in fairness, he's figuring when he saw the Gundam, the Gundam was going to alert personnel. Right. So he's like, better get armed because there's going to be a firefight coming up. Yeah. Love the detail here that he grabs the side with his legs. Yeah. So he can pull around and uh, punch the code on the door. Uh, again, just always thinking about how all of this stuff is going. Notable that he sees a Gundam. He gets shot at by the Gundam, he runs, he gets attacked by, like, a handful of guys, and he's like, that's not enough. Right. Which tells us a new Gundam is a big enough deal. This place should be crawling, crawling with people. To your point, like, yeah. Slender would never have done this, right? Like, yeah. what kind of security do they have? I like how in that shot we learn that the Mecha has gone forward. Because now instead of just like all these different screens, it's this one encompassing, okay, we're going to give you a th almost a 360 view mm -hmm. of what's going on around you. Yeah. And so this is what's, this is how things are different. That makes the chair different. That makes the controls different. That makes mm -hmm. it because, you know, you have that all encompassing view instead of having this like straightforward or you look up or you have to look down mm -hmm. into a specific screen. And if you're, and I have a feeling that if one of your, your cameras gets shot out, okay, you still got the rest of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, going on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I also like the fact that <clears throat> here that Char is like, we're going to address the thing that just happened to my arm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not just going to shrug this off really, literally. Mm -hmm. We're just going to, we're just going to acknowledge it and then get it done and then we can move on. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Absolutely right. Uh, and this gets across some information. You know, we've already been introduced <clears throat> to the Titans through Camille. Uh, we get the sense they are a new organization. Shar's point is they don't have their act together. So, but they seem to be Federation. They seem to be military. So how, how do you have an established military that's still not figuring things out? Intriguing. Right, yeah. I also appreciate the little animation thing here where when they cut to this 
you actually see the rotation of the uh, yeah. cylinder of the colony. It's not quite right because the mirrors should be rotating too, I believe. Um, although that could be new. It could be that the um, cylinder rotates, but the rest of it is is S- sta- yeah. st- uh, static? static. I'm not sure. I thought the whole thing was supposed to rotate. But again, could be a new design. Do you get the feeling this isn't the first time somebody's had this expression when dealing with Camille? I think it's it's a face he knows well. Yeah, I think so too. Hundreds <clears throat> of years in the future, still using paper binders. Yes. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Just saying. Also must be pointed out. That's Hikaru from Macross. <laughs> True. Right? Yeah. They're, they're, it's very close connection there with, obviously not exactly the same, but like, mm, right. yeah. Gundam build. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, granted, in this universe, you would have this sort of thing, mm-hmm. but it, there is a slight weirdness to, it, I, I should point out, it is weird because mobile suits are not uh, labors, right? Right. This is pat labor where like mobile suits are just used everywhere yet. Presumably, and we don't necessarily know this in Zeta Gundam yet, but like mobile suits are war weapons. So right. the idea that kids are building these just kind of generically may tell us a little bit more about the world. The mobile suits are now just a technology used generally. Yeah. Hmm. I just... Kind of like you know the the junior F fifteen fighter competition. Right. Like what? Well, th- speaking of Macross, remember the beginning of was it Macross seven where they're showing mm. the the picture of them like with the little airplane that they think being a oh yeah bicycle yeah. <coughs> <laughs> There's our politics. <coughs> yeah. There's our politics, and again, very black and white at this point. Right. Um. Contrast again with the original Gundam, where you get Zeon with a very, almost absurdly um, bad guy like visual design with you know the eyes on the ships and all that kind right. of stuff. But very quickly establishing like no, these are you know competent commanders. These are these are reasonable people. Um, these guys just seem like they're SS basically. Yeah, but yeah, no joke. Woof. And again, note how Camille is reacting to this. It's not, I will find a way. It's not, I'm clever and have some solution. It's like, this again. Yeah. Um, so different from a shonen protagonist. Just 100% different. New type. New type. Yeah. Absolute new type. Or it's just anime. <laughs> Bad news, you're an anime protagonist. Uh, we don't learn, do we? No, we do not. We do not <laughs> learn at all. <laughs> oh, God. But it's definitely establishing character. <laughs> yeah, definitely not Amaro Ray. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Somebody didn't park their Gundam right, apparently. No. Um, I thought I'd put it in drive, not reverse. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but getting back to what you were talking about with the original Gundam, sense of scale. Right. Uh, and just this idea of it's just the head that's there. Yeah. It's just really, well, man. Uh, down here. Yes. Here it, yeah. Again, notice how like she's moving both right to left and forward towards us to yeah. come towards the viewer it adds complexity to the scene and adds to the sense of chaos of all these things going on it's a it's a really neat trick well, hmm wonder who that is could that be someone who can just... I get your autograph can I get a selfie <laughs> <laughs> also note that Camille is now doing exactly the opposite of what Amaro did Amaro yeah running away and again you think you know you just broke out of this facility. You got shot at. And thankfully, no one will ever follow up on this. No, not at all. They don't have your information. Your mother didn't, like, literally show up. Show and screen your name over and over 
a very distinctive female <laughs> name for a boy. No, not at all. <laughs> um, War in the Pocket? A little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little bit. A lot. <laughs> you have done a lot. And a lot of it wasn't good. No. Very little of it, actually. <laughs> at least he acknowledges it. Yeah. He's not completely self-absorbed. But, hoof. Interesting, though, the... So we, we see the Jeep going up here. The visual symbolism of going from down to up. Uh, the sense of kind of rising into space. I'm sure Tomino means that. Right. Let's acknowledge the difference in the soundtrack. Yes. You know, we cut over to here, we get this massive orchestral rise. Dun, da, da. Mm -hmm. um, much grander and bigger than original Gundam soundtrack. And again, no complaint, they just they have massively more budget they can kind of do this now um yeah. but it, it feels much more cinematic well again apparently they have no problem firing on colonies it's, yeah wow and there's the end of the episode jeez so a lot different than the first episode of <clears throat> gundam mm -hmm. well, because you know in the first episode you yeah. know we were just yeah, just getting hit left and right, literally, with death explosions and all this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Much quieter. It's it's definitely after the war. You know, we, yeah. we know it's after the war, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely, everything is much more quiet. Mm -hmm. um, Char is trying to be even more stealthy mm -hmm. and whatever. And we don't really know what he's trying to do, actually. True. And, you know, and we're introduced to our new protagonist, Camille, who cannot be any more different <laughs> than Amaro Ray. Well, let's right? talk about that. I mean, um, he certainly shares that hyper focus, mm -hmm. uh, that that sense of, you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and I am very kind of self focused um, as opposed to people focused. Um, but he, you're absolutely right. He has none of that sense of justice, none of that sense of um, trying to do the right thing. Um, he's just kind of self-absorbed and then runs. Yeah. I mean, you know what he is? He's a normal teenager. Yeah. Honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, in a, in a very weird um, post-Universal Century War, yeah. Um, you know, because now we're seeing <clears throat> the actual factions. Like, we're introduced yeah. to several different factions. And mm -hmm. it is until about three quarters of the way in that we actually see a lot of federal of Fetties. True. Know, actual yeah. Fetties. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're fo being focused on, on these on these um, different factions. And, you know, Shar and his c new commando team, they're all veterans from the previous war, right? Yeah, true. And... And so for them, part of the war is never over for them. Mm. You know, as Shar is going through and he's just like, why, where is this? There should be security here. What's going on? There's mm. not, there's nothing here. And they're literally sloppy because there's no, there's no perceived enemy right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just so fascinating how you get, so you, let's talk about those factions. So we have, Char, who we don't know yet, right? Like him and his compatriots are doing something. We have Titans who appear to be SS, yeah. um, just kind of straight up evil. Um, then we have the AEUG, which I so I watched this originally in Japanese, and in Japanese it's pronounced Aug, Aug, which I mean, I mean that's that is how you pronounce that. So you have the Aug, who is apparently some radical group uh, that the Titans don't like, but you don't know what that means yet. Right. So, and again, contrast that with the original Gundam, where you were pretty clear about Federation versus Zeon. Mm, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> pretty quickly. There wasn't, a, there wasn't really a whole lot of gray areas. No. You were with Zeon, you are with Earth. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. And getting back to it being in peacetime, things aren't as clear. Right. 
Um, certainly a more, I'm going to say, confident style of directing in this, in the sense of how often you get sequences with like no narration, no idea what characters are doing. That right. whole sequence with Char going in, I mean, he speaks a little bit, but you just have to understand what's going on as he's, he's going in. The use of different camera angles, of variation in terms of, you know, Char's on this side of the, the, the shot, and then he's moving in, and then you see him coming towards you and moving away. Much more complicated and intricate shots that also don't feel showy. It's not like right. we're, we're trying to be flashy here. Uh, we can just get across a lot more. And we can get across a lot more, too, because, again, just the... The, the budget is higher, we have more detail in, in shots, we can show mm -hmm. Char more clearly um, in, the, in that way. There's just um, a, a different vibe this time around. Yeah, yeah. There's not, <clears throat> you know, there, there's no politics of the neutral sides or anything. Mm -hmm. And the fact that these Titans are like pretty much a homemade colony yeah, um, you know they made their own thing, but of course, as as we noted, it's pretty much all industrial. They're trying to go for the you know for military hardware. Mm. They're obviously, as to your point, they're they're kind of SS, and, <laughs> and they're they're just kind of like you know what are they trying to do? What what is it that they're trying? What's the faction here? What are they trying to do? And you know that might be part of Char's game is to figure out. Okay, are these titans worthy opponents? Mm. Are they? Is this something that he's doing to try and figure out if there is going to be a new Gundam? Yeah. How does that fit into his plans? Does he want to take the titans over? Yeah. Yeah. What's your take on Char's kind of personality in this episode compared to original Gundam? Like he, he definitely feels a little bit different. Um, he's very different to me in this one. Uh, so in the other one, you know, obviously he, and he still is, is very confident in his skills and what he's doing <clears throat> and that kind of thing. I think because it's not a war and he's not the, the, the Red Comet or whatever, you know, he is just a guy trying to keep yeah. low. And, you know, so he's, he doesn't have to worry about the fanfare, right? So he's not worrying about Dozel. He's not worrying mm -hmm. about, you know, banquets in his honor and, you know, all this stuff. <clears throat> he is more of a survivor veteran of a war. Mm -hmm. And he's not really letting go of it, I feel. It, it feels to me like he doesn't have the drive that he had. Uh, right. In original Gundam. Right. And he's trying to navigate whatever it is that he's trying to do. Yeah. And, you know, there's no more war for him to fight. And, you know, he's, to your point, I mean, it's almost half-hearted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it's smart for them to set this, I think it's literally, you know, like six years later. So just like it is six yeah. years later in the real world, same in Universal Century. And so that gives Char time to process, right? It's not like right. he did all that a week ago. Yeah. Uh, but Just last week, I just was <laughs> bad at the Battle of Loom. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you you do get that sense that, well, what do I do now? Uh, clearly, he's found right. a new purpose, but it's it's not the same as it was before. No. 100%. No. There's no... <clears throat> there's Well, as we know from original Gundam, the, the actual series, the movie original Gundam, not the, the series, um, or Gundam, sorry, Gundam Origins. Yeah. We know what his motivations were. Yeah, you know, right. which was to burn everything down. <laughs> and uh, but here, the, it, that is definitely gone. Mm -hmm. So, whatever he came to peace with at the end is whatever he came to peace yeah. peace with. He's not outright killing people. Um, you know, like when he was sneaking in and he saw those tech yeah, there. True. What did he do? Not do? He could have easily just gone, <laughs> and, you know, just stepped on him, and then that would have been it. Uh -huh. But you know, he he you know, did this epoxy on them and then admonished them, said, you know, don't talk so much, you know, just save your air until you get found. And I want to know, that's my burning question. Did they find them or are they just Ooh. like dead corpses? <laughs> and dead yeah. yeah. Um, also notable how uh, Camille seems to be a member of the elite. Uh, mm -hmm. Not only a space noid, but also clearly 
uh, a mother in high places. Yeah. Um, and someone who could just bail him out of a military prison, basically. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Or, or you know, military detention, I should say. Um, which, I mean, Amaro has the advantage of being uh, the son of a you know major technician. Uh, right. So certainly has, has that going for him. But, you you know, you don't get the feeling that he had the same kind of political pull. Right. Right. Uh, like even his father, well, you know, even his father had to follow orders. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, so there's only so much he could do. And also his father was more along the lines of, oh, yeah, this again. <laughs> uh, all right. Amaro, let's focus, focus, focus. Get back on the ship. Here, Camille has just got nobody, and she's like a little girlfriend who's trying to help him out, and and he's just like, I'm going to go to see the spaceship. And he's just, and then he just loses his stuff when yeah. you know, you know, when the, you know, he he gets the the telepathic. Here's the thing that I thought was interesting is that there was no inherent like, how did you know what I was thinking? True. You know, how did you know that? Mm-hmm. Does that guy is that guy a new type as well? Mm-hmm. Are we going to see that guy again? Mm-hmm. I feel like we are. I feel like he's like the SS version of Guy Falker, but yeah, that's just me. <laughs> um, but you know, and, and he because he clearly picked up on that, and that's yeah. what that's what you know was his trigger. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, um, dude, do you see not see the MPs and the like hi hat? caps and like everyone's like three feet taller than you <laughs> yeah hair trigger on this guy yeah um now which... if he had only stayed in practice more often he would have been able to punch a lot more guys mm-hmm. yeah uh, and you do see that judo training coming yeah. in you know coming out in that fight uh but it also doesn't matter. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, right, right. You're not going to win that fight. Don't, 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 don't matter. But that's an interesting thing. If we add that, we add the point of that he helped build a prototype mm-hmm. mecha for a, a com- competition. True. He's a pilot. Mm-hmm. What are the three things that he now has that Amro never had at the beginning of, of Gundam? You're absolutely right. That's a great point. So we're establishing right now that... He doesn't need a manual. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> like he he literally doesn't need to leaf through the manual and then mm-hmm. freak out when the thing's like, ah, it's happening. <laughs> what's going on? Oh God! You know, <clears throat> he can actually he could conceivably you could conceivably put him into a Gundam and have him do fairly well. Yeah, you know, not, mm-hmm. you know, not 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 an ace pilot or anything, but you know, it, the training would take a different track. Yeah, exactly. Or, yeah, yeah he, he he'd be okay. Yeah. Um, it's also interesting looking at this, and again, this is the English release. I don't know if this is. Uh, I assume this is following the the Japanese titles. It should be pointed out that the very first name on the right. title is Amaro Ray. Amaro Ray. So but all we saw of it was in, <laughs> was in the opening credits. So I was just I saw that I was like, huh. Ah. Um, and there are plenty of other things. Now, this looks like it's alphabetical. Amaro, Apoli, uh, okay, Basque, yeah. Beltorchka. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they're just like, we're going to put them all in there. Um, so the audience would definitely know, like, Amaro is going to be a, uh, going to be a deal. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So different. So different. So different. Um, slightly higher budget. Just slightly. <laughs> Just, just a little bit. <laughs> they, they pinched their pennies. Okay. Yeah, exactly, and, and just, just managed to make this. Sheesh. <laughs> oh boy. Well, more to come. Indeed. I love Venom. I love this. <laughs>